Hello everyone, welcome to static CPP tutorial. Today we are going to study about functors or functional objects. Both are same. Don't get confused if some interviewer asks, some interviewer twists um, the question. Instead of functors, they may, they may ask you the functional objects. Okay, so both are same. So let's jump into the topic. Let us see what is the functors or functional objects. So this particular feature is introduced from C++ 11 standard and uh, it is one of the best features introduced by the C++. The functor, the definition of the functor is the functor allows an instance or object of the class to be called or invoked as if it is an ordinary function. It means the object of the class behaves as a function just like any other normal function. So we can make the object of the class uh, to behave similarly or same as a function. So this is achieved by overloading the operator bracket. I call it bracket. So let us see an example uh, how exactly we can achieve this uh, functor. So let's start with an example. Let me take a simple class and uh, yeah I would like to make the things as simple as possible. Uh, for better understanding. So I have created a class with a simple integer variable inside it um, and uh, let me take a simple constructor and I am going to initialize the variable using the parameter which is passed from the constructor. I hope everyone is comfortable till here. So now comes the operator overloading part, the bracket operator overloading part. So let me overload the operator and uh, this is the parameter list. I will take int b and int c and uh, what I am going to return is a sum of a b and c so the basic example is ready the basic class is ready to demonstrate the functor now let us create the functor so we are good to go so first let me create an object of the class test and let me pass the parameter one Yes, the object is ready and now we are going to create a functor. Yes, we have created the functor here. So this is the functor. So as per the definition, the object of the class behaves as a function. So this is the object, test is the object. And uh, here it is behaving as a function, as a normal function. Let me uh, run this program and see the result. Yes, the result is six, which means now the object is behaving as a function test is the object as i mentioned before now it is behaving as an object uh, sorry now it is behaving as a function normal function you can see here right so we are passing b and c parameters we are passing two and three just like we pass to the normal function and uh, it is returning the sum of a b c so that's what it is doing so we have created the a functor successfully so let me uh, take one note here and that is the ace value is 1 right as per uh, the constructor the ace value is 1 that is what we are passing here and ace value is 1 b's value is 2 and c's value is 3 so we are getting the sum of a b c and uh, let me create one more uh, functor for the better understanding.
yes so here i have created the second functor and uh, let me change the values to one one and let me create one more functor copy and uh, I paste it let me just make um, everything similar let me pass two here two two so now we have created three functors and let me run the program to see the output of these three functors it is first one is six and second one is uh, three and the third one is returning five the functors what we have created are working perfectly all right as per the expectation and one thing is common between all these three functors that is a is equal to one In the first functor a is one and second functor also it is one and third functor is also uh, the a value is one and it remains the same until the object get, gets destroyed and that is what we achieve using the functors now let us see the benefits of the functors the first thing is since the functors are the objects right the functors are the objects and they contain the state and in this particular example a is the state and it remains the same till the object gets destroyed so they the the object test is having a value a is equal to one as a state so this is the state and it will be there until uh, till the lifetime of that particular object that is the benefit and uh, reason for preferring the functors over the traditional functions see if we use the traditional functions what happens is they will not be having any states we can just pass the value and get the return value after some operations right so that facility the having the state uh, will not, is not possible with the normal function but we can maintain the state in the normal function using the static variable inside it and it's it's an extra uh, extra burden so in functors it is not required to use any static variables they contain the state until they get destroyed right so here so it contains the value of uh, a is equal to one until this object is going to destroy and that is the advantage of having the functors so hope you understood this and uh, I'm going to create more videos on functors for uh, some interesting facts and uh, uh, to understand it better. And uh, we can do a lot of overloading uh, using the functors and all those things will be there in the next videos. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe for the latest updates. Thank you for watching.